So just to remind you, um, everything that I'm doing, I'm recording, and if you email me at uh, vcampos at sdccd.edu, uh, you can request the, the link. You only have to do it one time. I'll send you a link, and then all subsequent lectures will be at that link. So the big idea of what we need to do at the beginning, first steps. Um, start WAMP. Create database. Um, download WordPress. Unzip WordPress. And move it to www folder. And then start installation procedure. Those are the big ideas. We'll do those in a moment. But this is what we need to do at the very beginning. We did this last time. We'll do it again together. It's in the notes. Uh, I have the printer off at the moment because it's noisy during the lecture. Uh, but um, I'll turn it on a little bit later. Uh, and then you'll uh, be able to print it out if you need it. So these are the steps condensed. Uh, those handouts are in more detail. But these are the general steps condensed. OK, so. Uh, two whole days ago, we did this, and I forgot. <laughs> How do we first start WAMP? Some might see it as red, some might see it as purple, some might see it as magenta. But yes, the WAMP server icon, double click that icon right there. On your desktop, double click WAMP. Remember, you don't get any pop up or anything that says, Welcome to WAMP. How do you prove that WAMP is running? It's going to be in the tray down here. So see, it started as red, and then it went to orange, then it goes to green. If it hides itself, uh, it's probably then in the little arrow. So that was the first thing, wasn't it? Start WAMP. OK, well, we want to create a database. That one needed a little bit more effort. Where do we go, or what do we need to do to create the database? Oh, do I know? So first we'll go to the web browser. First we'll go to the web browser and then Do you have a preference over which browser? No, it's your preference. So we're gonna go to localhost slash PHP my admin. That's where we went to our uh, to access our databases. So that's our general step two. Obviously, WAMP server needs to be running first before you can go here. Localhost, remember, it's not localhost.com or localhost.net or anything like that. It's localhost. It's a virtual server on your computer that runs when WAMP server is running. So if WAMP server is not running, this won't work. But if you have WAMP server running, you go to localhost slash phpMyAdmin. We get to welcome to phpMyAdmin to create the database. Okay. What did we do here? How did we get into, how did we do the login? Um, th you're a couple of steps ahead. That was admin when we went into WordPress installation. Here we had root and nothing. So let's go into this login here. Username is root, password is nothing, and click go. That'll take us into the PHP My Admin screen where we can create, manage, and edit databases. We currently have these ones built in. How do you think we create a new database? You can press New, or we can go up to the button on the top as well, Databases. So we're going to create a new database today. Um, just to show you, these things uh, are named arbitrarily. Um, my no in my notes, it says create a database called WordPress. But here today, for fun, let's create a database called WP. This will keep you on your toes so that when we get to the next steps, you don't follow the, the instructions blindly like a robot. You think about these instructions are set up, yes, but sometimes they change a little bit depending on your situation. So if we follow the instructions exactly, it, it should work. But 
the idea here is remember, we, ha we can have multiple WordPress sites. Each WordPress site then needs its own database. Uh, more than one WordPress site should not use the same database. So this is just to show here that we can have different databases for different websites, for different WordPress sites. We just need to define them here. So we'll click Create. All right, so if that is Start WAMP, Create Database, next is Download WordPress. Uh, so where do we go download WordPress from? WordPress.org, yes. So at this point, let's go to WordPress.org, and then we'll click on that big, big blue button on the right side to download. So when you click the button, then you've got to hear again, download WordPress. Go ahead and click that one. Depending on your web browser, it'll either pop up to ask you what would you like to do with this file, or it may simply start downloading. Um, I want to save the file. That'll save to the desktop, probably. And then I need to extract it when it, uh, when it gets saved to the desktop. I need to right click and then extract all. So right here we've got uh, wordpress.zip and then I'm going to right click. Question over there? Guys, question? So you're going to right click and then extract all. So let that extract. It takes a moment to extract. You go to wordpress.org, not .com, .org, and I just opened it in a different tab. Um, didn't matter, just force of habit, I opened the new tab, and that's where I went to wordpress.org to download it. So mine's taking a moment, eventually it downloads, you extract it. Uh, a few people got confused at this step. Um, Remember the um, the zip uh, on Windows, the zip file gets downloaded, and then when you extract, it creates a folder with the same <coughs> with the same name as the zip file. Where people got confused is on the following step: people would copy that folder to the www folder. We don't want that folder, we want the folder inside of that folder, which is simply called WordPress. So my step here, unzip WordPress and move it, actually move it or copy it to the www folder. Remember, we're going to copy the WordPress software, what we just downloaded, what we just extracted. We're going to copy that into the WAMPs www folder. That one is in your computer window, in your local disk C, in the WAMP64 folder. Inside of WAMP64 we will see www This is where I need to copy my my WordPress folder into. Again, the, the one just named WordPress, the one inside the WordPress 495 folder. So I'm going to copy that into www. Question. 
C as in cat or Z as in zebra? Are you in the C folder, C as in cat, or Z folder, Z as in zebra? Yeah. Zebra? No, no, you need to be in the C drive, C as in cat, not Z drive. Mm -hmm. Question. Extract on that, and that's done. Uh, that's when then you copy the WordPress. 
All right, so after this WordPress extracted folder is copied into the WW folder, then we're going to go to the web browser to start the installation procedure. So go back to your web browser, and then after you've moved, um, after you've moved the um, WordPress folder into the WW folder, you can go to localhost slash WordPress. What's that? Yeah. That's the name of the folder. All right, everyone. Let me uh, let me interrupt you. Uh, let me interrupt you. This uh, one. Let me interrupt you, everyone. Uh, we're all getting a little noisy. We're all helping each other out. That's great. But you're distracting from the lecture and distracting from other people. Guys, guys, I'm, I'm talking at the moment. So, this is what I'm talking about. Sorry, but please, uh, if you're having trouble, raise your hand. I'll help you out. If you're helping each other, please do it at a moderate volume. It's getting out of hand. Uh, and if you are getting distracted and such, you know, remember, if you're helping each other out, you're probably distracting someone else or me. So, if you need help, raise your hand. I'll come help you out. Uh, but if you help each other out, please do it at a low volume. So we're at this point here of localhost slash WordPress. Um, this is the part where it's pretty straightforward because then at this point, I'll be there one moment. This is the point where you just kind of follow through a few steps about what um, basic defaults you want. So we will continue on that. Um, it says you need your database and such. So OK, we've got that. I'll click Let's Go. This is the part where um, a moment ago we created a database. I said, today I feel like calling my database WP. So if I try to connect to a database called WordPress, I did not create a database called WordPress today. I called it WP. This is the part then that the username is root and that the password is nothing. And that's where I can proceed from here. So this should look familiar. Go ahead and fill this part in, we'll submit, and then the next part is where we create the account. So we'll just follow those steps. It's in the web 64 So one reason where it might not work here is because uh, the name of your database. So if you called your database WordPress, like we did on Tuesday, or if you called it Kitty Cat, well, you're going to put its name right here in the database name box. I will submit. Seems like it's good, so then I'll run the installation. And this is the part where you can deviate from this if you want. Um, the name of a website that we're creating, anything we want. I'll be there one moment. The name of the website of what we want, a username. This is where we can put admin, and we need some password. We, we cannot have a blank password here. So I'm going to go with admin and password. Uh, you can put in real or fake email, and then um, discourage search engines. So I'll just fill this in. You can fill this in however you want. I'm going to go with Victor's Bakery. Uh, username admin, password, password, and I have to con confirm that it's a weak, it's a terrible password. Uh, we'll talk about changing our password, of course, later. Make up the email if you want, and then discourage search engines. So we'll proceed after this screen, and then we will have a website to work with. Well, 
All right, so um, at this point, um, I'm creating a login for my WordPress. I'm clicking install. So it, the confusing thing is that, yes, I'm using admin on this screen, but I'm using root on another screen. Root is only necessary to connect to the database. After that, I'm just going to use admin to log into my actual WordPress site. So you can make a note of that. There are two logins. You only need one, one time. Note, you use two logins. One for the database. So that's PHP, my admin. That's the one that uses root, no password. And the other one is um, one for the WordPress dashboard. Do the WordPress dashboard. And that one is whatever you want it to be. But in my notes, I've got admin and password. When you were on that screen, you could have chosen whatever you wanted, and that's fine. Although you need to write it down, or you need to memorize it, because I won't be able to access that. That whole email retrieval thing might not fully work also, because we're not on a real server. We're not on the real internet. We're on WAMP. We're on a virtual server. So those things about like retrieving your email might not fully function. So you're free to change uh, any of the things that I'm doing. It's just that you note this yourself so that you can log into your own system. Uh, so these two database, uh, these two logins. Um, you can also say uncommon and common. You're only going to need the root login just one time when we connect data uh, when we install WordPress after that we're just going to use the admin uh, we're going to use the login for the WordPress dashboard so after this it looks like I've got success I'm going to log in uh, and here it's asking for my username or email and password to log into WordPress this is the one that is admin and password if you wrote admin and password when you set it up two screens ago. If it was something else, well, hopefully you wrote it down what that was. And here I am in the dashboard. So I'll pause right here to make sure everyone's in the dashboard. You've created a site. You want to have a little trouble and need a little help. All right, so in general, that was a condensation. These, these um, uh, five steps were a very quick condensation of what those handouts were uh, from last time. If you forgot to bring your handouts, let me remind you where the handouts are at. And again, I'm going to put more handouts and notes in the network folder. Let me remind you where the network folder is. Um, if you go to your desktop and open up computer in the top left, inside of this computer window, Classroom data drive Z, Z as in zebra. Open up that one. Classroom data drive Z. Then we will find the folder Campus WordPress. If you open Campus WordPress, then I've got the notes that I wrote on Tuesday. I've got the um, I've got the, the handouts in PDF and Word format, and they're numbered. One, two, three. I'm going to give you number four today. I've got the syllabus. And then there's Mac versions of number one and number two. Three, four, and five, etc., are going to be the same. But instructions one and two, if, you're, if you want to try to do this at home, uh, they're going to be slightly different if you're on a Mac. If you're running Windows, then it's these that are out here. Uh, so everything that I did that we did right now, it was basically handouts one and two. But those are in more detailed if you go through the full handout. In the handouts is also where I have the items about, uh, well, what was the, um, what was the login on phpMyAdmin again? It's right there. Username is root, password is blank. Um, which folder do I copy into the WW folder? It's right here. It's the WordPress folder, not the zip file. 
Where is the www folder? It's right here in the computer window, C drive, WAMP folder, www. So I've got it all spelled out here. So if we've got a site running at this point, dashboard. Last time we were here, we were starting to look at the various screens of what WordPress is. Uh, let's continue to do that to get familiar with the WordPress software. So the first thing that we see here is the dashboard, the home screen. Um, most of these screens are customizable, uh, and most of these screens actually have uh, features and options that are hidden until you activate them because you can do so much with WordPress it can be so confusing they often only show you certain things uh, unless you change your, your settings here so let's see this for example in the dashboard home screen do you see on the top right corner it says screen options just about every screen we go to will have a different set of screen options when you open that you will see that at the moment the boxes that are visible on the on this screen are these up there and if you turn these on and off well I don't need to see the welcome message anymore I'm a WordPress pro so I don't need that I don't I don't care about the events or I don't care about activity whatever so just note here you can turn these on and off if you don't want to see these things if you turn them all off then that screen looks completely blank I would say usually you want um, at a glance and activity. You can, what's that? Uh, on the top right corner, you have a tab. You have a tab right there, top right corner, screen options. So you can set these up however you'd like, but I often like looking at these too because activity tells me what are recent comments that people have made on my site or pages and products that I've published and then at a glance tells me how many uh, how many things I have in total um, search engine information and my version of WordPress and theme and such um, this WordPress events is is uh, interesting to keep up to date with oh look they're going to have WordCamp in Los Angeles, they're going to have a convention. They have WordPress conventions all over the world for you to go to learn in depth and hobnob with the big wigs that made WordPress. Uh, no, I don't believe it's free, but uh, you can uh, go follow that link and check how much it costs, and you can go to the WordPress convention. Uh, one is going to be in June and one in September, uh, Orange County and Los Angeles. What you can also do in most of these screens is arrange these boxes how you want. See, uh, see if you put your uh, mouse over one of these box names, you get the four-headed arrow, and then you can move these around. So you can move these around. Once we add the e-commerce features, we will get some new boxes here, such as sales made, you know, uh, transactions pending or whatever those sorts of things and we can arrange our boxes uh, to maximize that that's in screen options let's look at um, let's look at users now if you look at the syllabus I have a list of goals that we do uh, during each week uh, so we're on track here to uh, learn some of the basic aspects here's a basic aspect that could be very important um, WordPress has the ability for multiple people to manage a, a site I have the login of admin and password so that would mean all of my team that I also want to work on the site needs to log in I could give them my username and password. I could say login with admin and password. The problem with that is that's not very secure. If everyone is using the exact same login and password, um, the security of that is compromised by the weakest link. You may have great cybersecurity practices, but not everyone else does. And you're giving away your password to other people on your team, and then they're, they're writing their password and sticking it on their screen right there. <laughs> 
well, then someone walks past it, sees the password, and logs into the site, hacks your site. So WordPress gives us the ability to create different users. And with different users, they can have different roles. So we'll make some notes here. WordPress can have multiple users. And each can have their own login info. This is more secure than everyone using the same login and password and is encouraged. Instead of giving everyone the same email and the same password, use this to log in. They should have their own credentials. You should also set roles. Roles are um, access levels. Not everyone needs the highest level. Right now, we've all got admin access, administrator access, the highest level. We're able to make every, we're able to make any change throughout the whole site, even like delete the whole site. So that means you don't want to give everyone access admin access unless they need it because I've had examples from clients that before they came to my company to hire us to work they had a friend helping them with their WordPress site suddenly they're not friends anymore and suddenly they get logged out of their site the friend got disgruntled and kicked out the other friend and like how do I get back to my WordPress site it's very hard to get back into a site where you've been locked out of it it's possible and we, we've done it, but it's very complicated uh, basically editing the database manually uh, back in PHE my admin, and that's complex. So you shouldn't give the highest levels of access to everyone. We can see here, uh, let's just give this a, let's play with this for a moment. Uh, under users, let's go to add new. Let's say we were going to add another user, someone else to help us manage the site. They need their own username, their own email required. These are optional. Password. Send a notification. And then role. You've got these roles right here. And they're basically in order of power. The default role that this person was about to get was subscriber, the lowest level. They really can't do anything on the site at all except read what's already been published. Um, higher levels, you, a person will be able to create something. Contributor, I have to double check exactly the difference between contributor and author, I don't quite remember. But those two are the levels where a person can start to make changes to pages on the site. I think one will allow a person to create a page, but another one will allow a person only to edit a page that already exists. I have to check which is which. Probably contributor is only a person that can edit something that exists. And probably author is someone that can create something new. Editor has more power over that. And then administrator is the one that can create anything on the site and also remove people from the site. Editor and below cannot remove people from the site. So usually that's the one you want to set other people to help you with on the site. Usually, you want question. You want usually you want editor as your as the role for your helpers. You could give others other people admin access, but it's usually safer editor, the second highest. Yes. Editor to do everything except for. Eliminate users. Mm -hmm. or can add users or just... I don't believe it can it can add users or delete users definitely not delete users I don't think it can add users uh, that role is reserved for admin so we don't need to do anything here but I'm just showing you that uh, if I needed to add more people to help me manage the site uh, because I'm busy doing payroll as well as cooking in the kitchen and I need other people to help me on the website of my business so I can add more roles they will log in with their own credentials they no longer work at the company I don't want them to have access well I can go to all users and they will be listed here and there will be a button to remove the user I'm the only one at the moment I can't remove myself 
but if I did add another user, they would be listed there under all users, and I can uh, edit their credentials or remove them. And then under your profile, it's your profile. You can go here and change your password. You can change your email address. You can write biography and so forth. Let's look at something here. This is like a little power user's tip that I like to give people. Let's go to your profile. At the moment, the admin color scheme is set to default. If you change it to, let's say, blue, you see how the interface changes color. And OK, changing color, that's cool. What's power user about that? What's power user about this is I like to change this depending on the user's role. So if I'm an admin with all of the power to make changes on the site, I like to have it on sunrise, this bright red color that will scare you or shock you into remembering this is the powerful account. And other people's accounts that are not as powerful, maybe you can put them on another color. Here's a real world example. When uh, a company hires us to do a website, we of course have the full administrator access. And we have in the contract that we will give the client all of their passwords, of course. But we usually don't give the, uh, the owner the full admin account. Um, we give them editor, the second level. The owner usually doesn't need to log in to like the most powerful features of the site. If they request it, of course, we'll do it. But knowing what has happened in the past, we usually give the, um, you know, the owner of the site second highest level and such. So you can change that if you want or leave it the same. If you make any changes you can click update at the bottom. Okay, so I just want to confirm at this point that we've got the site set up. We know about navigating the screens a little bit. We're going to take our first break, and after the break, we're going to take a deep look at the various settings that are available to WordPress and recommendations about some of these settings. So we'll pause here. We'll take a 10-minute break. We'll be back in 10 minutes. I'll turn the printer back on if you'd like to print, and then we will continue. <laughs>